Um, the final riverboat spray uh, is, is fairly simple. We, we basically take um, a create a boat and a wake. Uh, we make the wake long and skinny, uh, and you set the, uh, the resolution uh, on the fluid wake you need to set to match the aspect uh, of the size value you also give to the fluid so that it keeps the uh, pixels on the, the, uh, the, the fluid square. Um, and we've added a collision object here, and so the waves, when they go by there, will bounce off of it. And uh, there's also foam emission from the boat. So, so basically, we just animated. Actually, the boat's not animated. It's a did a make motor boat on it. So there are expressions on the boat. If you want to uh, select the boat, you can you can play with it under the extra attributes. It's got like rudder, and you know um, you can you can determine how fast it moves and shifts and how it bounces. So the boat is actually bobbing on the ocean surface there, and uh, We've got very mild ocean waves, so they don't compete with the dynamic wake that we've created. Um, the uh, now one problem you'll have with this if you're using a version before Maya 6.5 is that if you turn on wrap on the boundaries on the uh, wake uh, fluid wake, so that if you want to get reflections off the boundaries here, right now they're open boundaries, so that the the waves just go off the edges. But if you wrap them, it would crash. Uh, in versions prior to 6.5. There was a, a problem uh, with non-square uh, wake indexing um, when you've got wrapping edges uh, or, or hard edges. Um, and so just, just be aware of that uh, if, you're, if you're creating uh, wakes before uh, version 6.5 that they had that bug. Now the spray is also another element of this. This is just a really easy cheat. Um, you just put like a couple of emitters on the side and you could use little volume emitters and just kind of orient them to be the direction of the surface so they flow in the direction of the surface and you can get fancier and have expressions that I you know emit more when it's going down uh, than when it's going up and stuff uh, to get a good spray off the front of your boat. What I have over here is an uh, uh, example where you can uh, use some of the techniques that we showed before and use them to create a, a boat with, uh, which sort of splashes around some uh, foam and we are using particle emission for that. So if I play the uh, animation over here, you can see that uh, uh, it's uh, emitting some particles that sort of uh, um hit the hull of the boat and then bounce off, fall into the ocean and then I as, as they fall into the ocean they also emit some foam in it. The trick over here is uh, positioning this uh, um, curve that you see over here in such a way that uh, the particles are created as close to the hull as possible and uh, you might want to put another uh, another of these uh, emitters in the front of the boat uh, to create some extra uh, particles. So if I look through this uh, uh, view, you can see that they are bouncing off the hull. Um, the way to control the emission is to, if you look at the uh, some of the uh, extra attributes that are on the ocean plane over here. Um, you'll see that there are some extra attributes and um, you can increase the amount of uh, emission through, through one of these uh, attributes. You can add extra foam uh, by increasing this. You can change the velocity threshold at which the particles are being emitted. You could actually increase the upward velocity at which the particles get ejected by increasing that. Uh, or else you could give them extra bounce by increasing the extra velocity. And all this is connected inside the expression editor, which is over here. And uh, this is the emission uh, creation expression that actually controls it. Uh, it takes in all these extra attributes and pipes them into ultimately somewhere over here. So uh, what I'm doing here is uh, I'm taking samples of the velocity 
um, of the ocean, uh, if the velocity exceeds certain amount, I pipe it into the uh, velocity of the particles that are being created. Um, the other expressions are also pretty much uh, similar to what we have seen before. So if I play the animation, and I'm just going to hide the attribute editor over here. So through this uh, view, you can see that the particles are bouncing off the hull. Uh, they are a little bit too bouncy, but you can adjust that through the extra attributes that we have added. So uh, it's kind of similar to, it's, it's sort of based on the same principles that we have seen before, in which the boat essentially wasn't moving, it was a wall. Uh, but in this case, it's a boat that's actually moving through the water and it's creating turbulence. The file splash demo is uh, more of a complete example. Uh, it's designed to render showing some of the ocean uh, uh, ray tracing with uh, reflections and uh, the way depth and color change uh, on the ocean. And it's got a fairly complex uh, particle and expression setup, so it's uh, worth going into. Um, we have this uh, little object that jumps into the water like a penguin here, and then he swims around. And as he swims, uh, he releases bubbles under the water which float upward. They, uh, those bubbles die when they hit the surface so they don't continue. When he breaks the surface, it automatically uh, creates spray. That spray then goes down, and where the spray hits the water, it actually creates ripples and it also emits foam. Uh, so we could actually look at that at the beginning. And you can just change the animation and you can keyframe. The, the actual motion of this guy is keyframed. And if you change the keyframes, you'll get different uh, splashes and uh, you know, all dynamically happening as secondary animations. So uh, let's, let's look at, say, uh, the initial splash here. As those particles go up, they come in and drop down. And we can look at that in more detail. We've got like an ocean preview plane here. And we can, um, uh, you can move that around and uh, uh, we could scale it or we could increase its resolution. But if we just want to see a particular part in detail, one way is to uh, kind of scale it. And that way we can, we can see exactly how the uh, uh, stuff is locally behaving here. And it doesn't really slow down any because we're just looking at a portion of it. Um, so there's uh, a few things happening. We've got uh, an a wake created with uh, foam here. So there, there are actually two fluid nodes overlapping, uh, which is done through the uh, fluid effects on the ocean. You create a wake. We've got our overall ocean. And note that the wakes uh, blend in their effect towards the edges. Uh, that's the uh, uh, fluid drop-off allows you to kind of soften the edge where these waves, so waves at the edge of the wake won't suddenly hard have a hard cutoff where they go into the ocean. Um, the uh, expressions uh, to get this uh, mission right are somewhat complicated. Let, let's, let's watch slowly as we move here. You'll notice that there's this uh, little disk uh, that follows the surface around. You'll see the way the disk is constructed is such that he um, emits particles outward from it like a splash. It's, got, it's, it's sort of curved a little bit, and we're using the surface emission off of this. So you can shape that ring to get a different kind of spread of particles. Uh, there's an expression that keeps him, he's basically his uh, XZ position is the same as our little character. So as he moves, we've just simply connected the XZ to this. And then the um, Y position is done uh, by doing a color at point on the uh, ocean and to get the height of the ocean. So it'll kind of bob up and down on the surface of the ocean like a little boy as it as it moves along. Um, the um, and then now to determine whether or not we need to splash, we track the velocity of this guy moving inward. And let me show some of the expressions. Um, the expression two here. Uh, the you can define on this. You can change the particle spray rate. And bubbles rate, I haven't bothered creating dynamic attributes for this. They're all just right in the expression. And you can kind of set those variables. Or you could create dynamic attributes for that. Um, 
we find out the velocity of our, our little penguin guy by um, doing get adder frame minus two, you know, dash time frame minus two, this, this, this of the uh, translate y. And so this tells us the last y position, and then we just get nerve sphere translate y to get the current, and the difference of that tells us the y velocity of it. And so we can know if it's going up or down. And then by knowing that distance, we can change the uh, emission rate. Um, and there's it, it gets a little more subtle, and there's some cutoffs and, uh, and speed things. But that's basically uh, what's going on. We've got, with these other particles, um, uh, some expressions that, that handle the, uh, the, the bubbles rising and uh, also the, uh, the um, this is, uh, uh, you know, just uh, creating the particles so that they, uh, they create on the surface and die when they fall back into the surface. So you can, you can pull out those expressions and kind of analyze them uh, to see a bit more what's going on with this example. Um, the shading on the ocean has also been set up for good uh, ray trace uh, reflections um, and uh, also uh, to avoid chatter off in the distance on the shading, we've we use production quality settings with contrast sensitive, which is important if you want to get rid of uh, chatter um, on the ocean near the horizon. Um, the, the, the regular production settings aren't enough to, to resolve that, but the contrast sensitive uh, settings generally help with that.